Our next guest is a talented actress and comedian you know from her work as Meredith on The Office. Every episode of The Office is now streaming on Peacock. Please welcome to the show our friend Kate Flannery. Hi, Kate. Hi, Seth. How are you? I'm good. I'm always uh, so happy to see you. Uh, Kate, I knew uh, your history as an improviser in Chicago. I did not know you were from uh, Philly. Um, is that someplace you get back to often? I do. I'm, I'm uh, one of seven kids, and um, my dad is, uh, he's still kicking. He's the best. He's in his 90s. He's hilarious. And uh, yeah, I, I try to get home as much as I can. I was just home in um, October. I got to like quarantine for two weeks in my friend's garage apartment and then spend time with my dad. So I kind of felt like Fonzie for a few weeks. <laughs> you got the Fonzie life. No, I uh, did. It was awesome. You, uh, you mentioned uh, you're one of seven. You're the youngest of seven. Uh, is that yeah. right? I do. I have a fraternal twin sister, but technically I'm the youngest. Gotcha. Damn it. And now, do you feel like being the youngest of seven, can you track back in, in your life's journey that that maybe is why you're in show business? Absolutely. 300%. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I even bother to spend money on a therapist. It's so <laughs> stereotypical. Um, you, uh, you were a Chicago improviser. Did that, uh, were those, those must have been uh, formative and exciting years for you? The greatest. The greatest. I mean, the, I, you know, I, it's funny. I, I work a lot with Jane Lynch now. We do a, a, a live show together. We did a Christmas album together. But I realized, I figured out the very, very first time I ever went to Second City, Jane Lynch was on stage understudying for Bonnie Hunt because it was Bonnie Hunt's wedding day. And then Bonnie Hunt came back to uh, do the improv set in her wedding gown. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't yeah, think my is. wife would have been psyched on her wedding night if I told her I was off to do some improv. <laughs> I think that's why she's divorced now. <laughs> <laughs> they say you can usually see the signs. You can usually see the signs. Well, you can't take off one night? <laughs> one night? You can't miss one show? I, uh, it's amazing you said that the first time, uh, one of the first times I went to Second City, I saw Tina Fey understudying for John Glazer. And it is real, I mean, when you look back at how lucky we were, it was crazy who you would just see that then over the course of the following two decades has been exactly as successful as you kind of hoped they'd be when you first saw them on stage. Absolutely. No, it's, it's amazing. And then like, and I also remember when I was there, John Favreau could not get hired at Second City. He was literally a host. He was seating people. <laughs> <laughs> He's, it's a shame it didn't work out for him. Too um, bad. That's a shame. How, uh, so uh, The Office now is uh, not just uh, uh, on Peacock, but also with sort of these extra long episodes, uh, which are really fun for people. Uh, I feel a growing number of people who continue to become fans of this show uh, every day. Uh, what was your audition process for The Office like? Well, initially I, I auditioned for the part of Jan, who's Michael's boss, um, played by the beautiful Melora Hardin. Clearly they went in a different way. <laughs> um, so I actually was not in the pilot and I ended up replacing somebody and they kind of did, I don't know, I think they were trying to figure out who everybody was. So I'm not even sure who, I wasn't even sure that Meredith, I mean, I had no idea she was going to become a drunk or a floozy. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, my dad owns a bar, my, you know, my dad owned Flannery's Tavern for years. So I feel like playing an alcoholic, I, I come by it quite honestly. It's really, um, don't take this the wrong way, it seems really cliche to be a Flannery whose dad op owned a bar called Flannery's Tavern. I know, I know. It's, <laughs> uh, you know what, I, Irish people, we don't get upset about that stuff. We just don't. It's just, if you, you know, I mean, as Seth, I always say, if you can't type, stereotype. Right? <laughs> I mean, I, it's like, this is who we, I, it's who, I, why not be loud and proud of who I am, you know? <laughs> now, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, you didn't know uh, what the character was going to develop into. Like, what was the process like? Did it, it you sort of very slowly reveal, uh, reveal itself over time? Did writers yes. tell you in advance? N nobody told me in advance, but I do remember the ho first Halloween episode during season two, that's when um, I had my first monologue about being, about being an alcoholic. And I guess it was so dark that the network decided not to use it. So we had to wait till Christmas to reveal that Meredith was a drunk. <laughs> I think we all, yeah. I mean, by Christmas, there's no secrets anymore. Right. You, um, I mean, Meredith ended up, uh, you wouldn't probably guess this from our first introduction to her, a fair amount of stunts over the years. Uh, yes. Did you participate in the stunts? What was your level of, uh, of uh, engagement with those? 
But I did most of my own stunts on the show. I actually kind of loved it. I just remember the first season, like, uh, Greg Daniels had asked me to dress up like uh, Madonna. And they were just doing a still picture with um, Rain Wilson and, and uh, Steve Carell as Crockett and Tubbs. <laughs> And I, I just, so I was like, yeah, I'll be Madonna. Like every, anything, I was just up for almost, almost anything. I did not set my hair on fire in the Christmas episode, Moroccan Christmas, and I didn't shave my head in the Lice episode the last season. But other than that, I've done every, I got hit by the car, I had the bat on the head, the bag on the, you know, you know, I, everything. What was, it, what was it, what's the prep like when you're, um, you know, uh, somebody with an improv background about to be hit by a car on a comedy show? <laughs> well, um, there's a safety meeting. <laughs> Uh, and Greg Daniels was trying to get me all like loose. We were like doing jumping jacks and I just had to kind of roll onto the glass and then roll off the car onto a giant mat. <laughs> that was, <laughs> and I literally think the editor, Dave Rogers, pushed me a little bit right before we started just to give me the momentum. So it was a team effort. Nice it, I did not do this, but I cannot take credit by myself. But... It takes a village to get hit by a car in the office. Um, you actually, uh, see, so you, uh, back in your uh, Chicago improv days, which would make sense, that was when SNL was going and, and finding people to audition. So you actually auditioned for SNL, I guess, in the 90s, right? Yeah, I was up for SNL. Uh, Laura Michaels came to a show I did at the Annoyance Theater. I was also at Second City, but I, I, I did another show at the Annoyance. And um, he brought his good buddy, uh, Quincy Jones, as you do. <laughs> sitting in these crappy folding chairs. And I think we had to do the show like on a Tuesday night. I, they had to move the show because he was coming. And then we had lunch the next day. And he also was looking at three other women from the show. Um, and so Mike Shoemaker, your producer, was with Lauren at the time because he's working on so. And so what the process was that you would walk to lunch with Lauren and then have lunch and then switch and be with Mike or the opposite. So you'd always have somebody to be, like, let them have a private conversation close by. If that makes any sense? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but Lauren would do that. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, and the thing is, like, I'm friends with the other, per you know, with the woman, other woman that's being considered. It was Melanie Hutzel, and she ended up getting the job. And, like, of course, I'm, like, so Catholic that I kind of didn't know what to do. You know, it's like, you, you don't want to be a douchebag. You want to be happy for your friends. But, you know, thousands of dollars of therapy later, you go, okay, I guess I had a right to be a little bummed about that. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. Of course. That's all right. Uh, well, I think uh, all of us uh, are, are so happy um, that it worked out uh, the way it did. Uh, it is um, such a delight to go back and watch that show that is just, uh, it not only maintained its excellence, it just, it just holds so well. It just keeps so well. And, uh, and you're such a big part of it. Thanks so much for being oh, here, Kate. Thank you so much, Seth. You're the best. We'll see you next time. You're the best. Every season of The Office is currently streaming on Peacock.